Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel and if you happen to be new here, welcome to the Painted South. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can take those faux brick panels from your local home improvement store and turn them into a beautiful accent wall or other area in your home for a fraction of the cost of thin brick. I hope you are inspired by this video. I hope the tutorial is easy to follow and that you decide to tackle this project in your own home. It is going to add so much warmth and character to any space you decide to install it in your home. So that being said, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is decide where you want to apply this brick paneling so that you know how many square feet you need to purchase. Now each sheet comes in a four by eight measurement, so that is 32 square feet, and you want the seams to line up. So you're going to need to do some calculating in your area. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have that before you go to the home improvement store. So that is step number one. Now the next step is for you to refer back to your inspiration photos. What kind of look do you want to achieve with this brick paneling? For me, the brick paneling was pretty much just a nice template so you're going to need to know the color scheme and style that you want to achieve so in my case i sort of wanted to match the exterior with those traditional red bricks and terracotta colors but you may want to go with more of a farmhouse look more yellowed bricks maybe some neutrals grays taupes i mean there are so many different color schemes so refer back to whatever your favorite brick wall is and go with that so when you go to the home improvement store you'll know what paint colors to choose now you may have some paint around your house that you can use to mix with some other colors that you purchased like i did but whatever paint you use you definitely want to try to go with a super flat matte paint or even chalk paints you don't want any type of sheen because brick is not shiny so i would totally suggest sticking with flat or matte or chalk finishes to mix in with the mixture that I'm about to show you that gives you that real authentic brick finish. In my case, I went with those terracotta colors. I got sort of a really dark color. I already had a brown on hand. You may want to get something a little more orange so that you can mix all of these together and come up with various shades of the colors that are in your inspiration photo or the brick that you may have seen in a store that you're trying to mimic. So the brick panels are very important. You're going to want to make sure you have all of the tools, screws, or nails to install the brick. You're going to want to get several paint colors for you to achieve the look of the brick that you're going for. And the next thing you want to get is the mortar color. Now I used sanded tile grout. It works fantastic. If you don't want to mix it up, they do have pre-mixed options available for you to choose from. In my case, I did several different colors on the wall and I was not happy with them because the grays ended up turning kind of a bluish color and it looked really terrible once it was on there. So I ended up ultimately using a color called Bone. It's kind of an off-white color and it looks really, really great. It's a neutral color, so you may want to really check out all of the colors with the color scheme that you're going for or just try to pick one that is identical to your inspiration photo the next two items that you're going to need are very important in creating that texture for this brick look you're going to need all-purpose joint compound i already had some on hand i had the larger buckets because we're doing a lot of drywall work but you may be able to get away with a smaller amount but you're going to need that you're also going to need pre-mixed stucco patch now this comes in different brands. I happen to purchase mine at Ace Hardware, so I got this brand. It works fantastic. Just make sure you get the pre-mixed version. I think they do have some that you can mix up on your own, but this is just what I recommend for ease, and you really don't need a, a tremendous amount, so you may go through one or two buckets. Now you may want to use a mini roller if you're doing a large surface, and I did use mine on the huge brick wall, but in today's video, I'm just going to be doing a sample board. And so I used Dollar Tree sponges and cut them into quarters or halves. They work fantastic, which you'll see here in just a minute, to create that texture. And they're very easy to work with, so you're not getting outside of the brick areas. So you're going to want some sponges from the Dollar Tree, or you may already have some on hand. You may want some gloves to protect your hands and some paper towels as well. You're also going to need some three or four inch putty knives. They do come in plastic, but I prefer to use a metal one. It's been well loved and I'm very used to using it. So whatever you're comfortable with, you're going to need one of these to create the texture on the brick. 
Now this is one of my favorite products and you're definitely going to need this to create the depth in your brick is some type of decorative glaze. Now mine is Rust-Oleum's decorative glaze in the color Java Brown, but they have so many different types out there and lots of different brands. So as long as you get something that's dark, maybe a super dark gray, I recommend dark brown. It's just going to add that depth and dimension that you're going to need in creating the brick look. Now my favorite paintbrush happens to be the angled brush from Worcester, which is a fantastic brush, but for this you really only need one of those cheap chip brushes. I recommend the two inch. It's the perfect size to apply your glaze to the bricks. You're also going to need some mixing containers to mix the product in. Now you can get some airtight containers if you're mixing up large amounts or you're going to be working on a large area so that the paint doesn't dry out. So you're going to want to get some containers and you can certainly use containers like yogurt containers, Cool Whip containers, any kind of little container that has a lid that you can mix up your product, you can use those. And I'm going to be showing that I used here for this sample board a small roller tray, anything that you want to use that you can get your putty knife in to apply the product is what you're going to want to purchase. So I do recommend getting at least one of these little roller trays or something very similar. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your baseboard. If you're doing an entire wall, you want the brick to look like it is behind the other elements. I Now, we didn't remove our door trim because this is only a quarter inch thick, and I am enhancing the door trim. That's going to be in a later video, but I do recommend removing your baseboard so that the paneling sits behind it, and it looks more natural that way. Now, I'm not going to get into specifics for installing the brick paneling. Everyone's room and surface is going to be different. All I can say is that you definitely want to line up your brick pattern. So the brick paneling comes where it butts together and there's going to be full bricks with a grout line and half bricks. So you want to have those half bricks touching as close as you can. Don't worry about any type of cracks or blemishes. It's going to totally be covered. Just make sure you keep the pattern wherever you install it. And these products that we're going to be putting on top of it are going to cover any screw holes or nail holes or divots or anything like that. So just make sure that you get the brick panels installed securely and that they're not moving anywhere. After you have installed your brick paneling, it is time to mix up your paint finish. So for this mixture, you're going to want to take some joint compound and mix it with the pre-mixed stucco patch. There isn't necessarily an exact ratio. I would recommend doing a 50-50 mix. You don't have to mix this separately. You can put it all in the same container and mix it up in there. So just put your joint compound, your stucco patch, and the first color that you want to apply to your bricks. Again, there's no exact ratio. You just want to make sure that it is not runny. It's nice and thick and will cling to your putty knife. So take your putty knife and dip it in the mixture and try to keep the product on the very end of the blade. Now you may want to practice a little bit before you start on your actual wall, but it's very simple. All you're going to do is take the blade and the product and lightly drag it across the brick, creating random texture on each and every brick. You're going to want to build up this texture over several layers. So just go ahead and get that first color, that first product applied to your brick paneling as you see me doing here. So with this layer, you're going to start covering those joints between the two brick halves. And if you have any screws that you had to put in right through your bricks or nails, use the mixture to fill those in as well. You're going to want to let that first layer firm up quite a bit. It doesn't have to be 100% dry. Let that firm up and you can go ahead and start mixing up your next color. You can save any extra product if you happen to have a bunch mixed up of one color. Put it in a separate container. For this purpose, for the sample board, I'm just going to go ahead and use my same pan and put some more paint and stucco patch and joint compound in and mix up a new color. I know this may not look so great when you're first starting, but trust me, all of these layers and all of these products combined are going to make a really great outcome. So just keep going. It doesn't have to be perfect. This process is very forgiving. So just get the product on. You're going to have some lumps and bumps and grooves, and that is all perfect. 
you want that texture, you want that real look of brick. Now, if on your inspiration photos, you have bricks that have some darker ones intermixed throughout, go ahead and put those on. Now, I'm going to use this little sponge to apply some dark brownish purple color to some of mine because that's what I did on my kitchen wall. These sponges are great because you can use a dabbing, a swiping motion, a pouncing, just get the texture on there and you can keep working with it while it's still wet. So you're going to want to keep applying your layers. The next thing you want to do is mix up some lighter shades for highlights. Going to want to just keep adding all of the layers referring back to your inspiration photo and try to get all of those colors onto your brick. So after all of those layers have dried, now's the time we're going to add our dark glaze. So you're going to want to take that two inch chip brush and apply the glaze and dab off any excess with a wet paper towel. You don't want to get your bricks super wet because remember we did use joint compound. So you want to just dab it lightly with a damp or slightly wet paper towel, but don't really rub aggressively. It will be dry and you will be able to get the glaze back off, but just be careful while you're doing it and make sure you're not pulling any product back off. Now the glaze is what really brings everything to life. So once you've applied the glaze, you're gonna to wanna to let that dry and then we're going to move on from there. So now that the glaze has dried and it's added all of that depth and dimension, we're going to bring some more of the brick colors back on top of that. So now you're gonna to have to refer again back to your inspiration photo and start layering those colors back on the brick. Again, it doesn't take very much product and the colors are very easy to change with just a little bit of dabbing from your sponge or a roller or a paintbrush, however you want to apply the colors that you want back on top of your brick. And this is where we're gonna repeat this process back and forth. You can add more paint, you can add more texture, more layers, more highlights, more glaze on top of that until you come up with the look that you're happy with that you feel looks like your inspiration photo or something similar that you're happy with.
Now, if you're looking at your brick wall and you don't feel like you're really happy with it, or maybe once you have all of the colors up that you thought were going to look right in your home, but it's just not working, maybe with your flooring or maybe your furniture or something like that, you can always go right back over it. You can neutralize a lot of it. You can go over it. Say you went too dark with the red, just go back over it and then add a little bit of glaze back. You don't have to always do everything in super thick layers. You can just adjust the color with some chalk paint or some other flat paint and add a little bit of glaze back and so forth. This method is very versatile. It's very forgiving. It's very easy to change. If you change your mind later on, but I will say don't give up because what really makes it come together is when you apply the sanded grout. Now this is something that I made a huge mistake on when I was doing the wall in my kitchen. I painstakingly applied the sanded grout with my fingers several times because I went through several different colors. I didn't like the gray, so I darkened it with glaze and then it looked dirty and then I went back with another color that was not the right gray either. And then I went back with another gray that looked blue and it was just a several layer process that I really regret. So I ended up having to go with, and I'm glad that I did, a messy mortar, really thick, messy mortar look using that bone color. But I applied it with my fingers and it was very messy. A lot dropped onto plastic that I had down on the floor. So if I were you, I would suggest using a mortar bag. You can get these for less than $10. I think they're like $6.98 or something like that at the Home Improvement Store. Mix up your grout fairly thick so it doesn't run off. Remember, you're working on a vertical surface. So I would recommend using these bags. You wanna just butter it in between all of the mortar joints on your faux brick, and then you can dab it with, after it sets up for about five or 10 minutes, then you can go in and sort of dab it and push it out as much as you want if you want that messy mortar look. Now you can do less grout, more grout. If you have a lot of screws in those joints like I did, I had to cover them up and this works perfectly. It's so forgiving. You just put it in there, smooth it out, work with it while it's still wet. And if you're going with messy mortar, kind of the messier the better. Now I do recommend maybe mixing up a little bit of the sanded grout and just putting it on like a paint stick or something like that and holding it up to your brick if you are unsure of the color. Like I said, I made some costly mistakes by applying different colors that didn't look the same on the wall. I will say this, this sanded grout in the color bone when I first started putting it on because of the lighting that was coming in from the window, it looked super bright white and it's really not. And even on camera, it's looking bright white, but it's really a, a nice off white. It's just like a bone white. And from the side, it kind of looks creamy. So I would just recommend making sure before you do your entire wall that you have the right grout color that you want. And here is the final result of the sample board. And I'm going to show you some footage of the actual brick wall in my kitchen as well. I, I really like this sample board better than what I did in my kitchen almost because I added even more texture on the sample board because I was just learning when I was doing the kitchen wall. So don't be afraid to just get in there and add all, the, all of that texture because when you put on your sanded grout, it's going to fill in some of that. So you're going to want to build up the bricks. I really love how this project turned out. It has added so much warmth and coziness to our kitchen. It made a huge difference. It was totally worth the money. We only spent a couple of hundred dollars because I had a lot of the products on hand, but if you had to buy everything and you were doing a wall like we did in our kitchen, you would spend 300 to 350 if you had to buy all the paint, all the grout, all the supplies, all the buckets, all the just everything. If you had to buy everything completely, it would probably be around $300. So that's a fraction of the cost of Thin Brick. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope that this video brought some value to you and that it may inspire you and encourage you to tackle a project like this in your own home. I appreciate every time you hit the like button, every time you leave a comment or share my video with friends and family or pin it on Pinterest. It makes such a big difference for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. I hope to see you in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you won't miss the next upload. 
Take care, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.